night and day. The quality of the content in the Borderlands 3 DLC when compared to the newest Gearbox offering in Tiny Tina DLC, I wasn't even really upset about this before because I hadn't played the Borderlands 3 DLC yet. But now that I have, I'm upset! I purchased the first season of DLC on sale for $16, and it's the best value gaming purchase I've made in a long time. Welcome to the Potato Backlog Project. I complete games out of my 431 game backlog, allowing myself $5 per completion to go towards new or used gaming purchases. Borderlands 3 Season 1 DLC pack is the second game purchase I've made since starting my project. These DLC offerings are a lot more robust than I originally thought they were, so I'm gonna be making a video for all four. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the ever important staple that holds the entire universe together, the Tater Raider, and let's get into it. Even if I hadn't gotten this DLC pack on sale, after playing through the first offering, I know that I would have been okay paying day one price for this for what they give you here. Moxie's heist of the handsome jackpot feels like its own self-contained game. It has its own original locations created, separate from the main Borderlands 3 game, a storyline entirely unto its own, and it clocks in around 5 to 8 hours for playtime, depending on how thorough you are and what kind of builds you take into it. Moxie finds out handsome Jack created a casino stolen from her ideas when they were together, and she has aspirations to take it back for herself. You sign on to help her out and before you know it you find yourself in the casino and off to the races. The main quest line is kind of modeled around old heist movie concepts as the name suggests. You end up tasked with recruiting a team of sorts from within the casino itself to help take down the main bad guy pretty boy who's been running the casino since Jack's death. It was really nice to see some handsome Jack stuff here again. My favorite bit being the commercial of him promoting his casino shown in a worn out video style in like 4-3 aspect ratio. It really sets that special tone and helps sell the world to get you going out of the gate. The characters you run into as you explore the casino are all pretty great. The humor here is pretty good and on par with good Borderlands writing. Doppelganger Jack returns and is good for some laughs. The mayor of a place called Trashlantis. The entire Trashlantis thing was great. I really liked it. Freddy and his deadly hair. And not having the twins constantly chiming in over the comms was pretty refreshing. Although I came to understand their purpose in the main game, they still annoyed the crap out of me, so their absolute absence here was very very welcome. I think the only gameplay additions that came along here would have been a raise in the level cap of the time and some new gun options, which I believe were worked into the main game, though I could be wrong on that as I didn't play this at launch. The gameplay itself is just as crisp and fun as ever, zero complaints on that front. If you want to play this content with a friend online, they will need to own it as well, which I think is pretty fair all things considered. There's also an option to play couch co-op split screen if you have any friends that want to do that with you. The enemy variety in the casino was good from robots to humanoid to creatures with a heavier emphasis on robots. The level designs of the casino itself all work really well for the combat that happens within. There are a few sub bosses and the final boss was really great. I'm not going to spoil or show him because if you dig Borderlands, I think you should play this content. The big takeaway for me here was just how fully realized this offering is. I guess I've been so used to getting so little from DLC. Companies just cutting out parts of the main game before release and packaging it as DLC after release. This is created and designed separately from the main story and main areas and it's all self-contained, a real joy to play through. Five happy potato faces out of five. DLC done right. The shame gearbox should be bestowed for the Wonderlands DLC now that I've seen this. And what came before it in the Borderlands 2 DLC? That's generational shame gearbox. Come on, man. I was really holding out hope that they would make that right at some point, especially a year after the game release, but I just don't think it's going to happen now. Even though this is the first of four offerings, I am thoroughly impressed. Highly recommend playing. This goes on sale all the time. 16 bucks for all four? I feel like I robbed somebody for the quality experience. I got here. Thank you for all your support on the first Borderlands 3 video and for suggesting that I give this DLC a try. Be kind to yourselves and others that deserve it. We're on to the next one. AJ, don't you dare hit stop. And shout out to my kids. Thank you so much for your support. And we're on to the next one. Moxie. Super heist. The super duper heist. That's good. We're good. Hit the record button. Hit the record button. Hit the record button. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video. <laughs> 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 and let's go.